An apple a day keeps the doctor away. An over 100 year old saying that really means eating nutritious food will make you healthier and you won't have to go to the doctor very often. It doesn't mean specifically eating apples keeps the doctor away, but there is definitely some truth to that. The per capita consumption of apples in the United States is about 16 pounds, roughly 30 to 40 apples per year. That's less than one per week, despite it being the second most consumed fruit behind bananas at 27 pounds. And you know, you're not even having it once a week, let alone every day. So, you know, it's not really a considerable part of the average person's diet. And bananas are much higher in anti-nutrients, a lot harder on the stomach. Maybe I'll do a separate video on bananas in the future, but let's try to understand why apples might just be the healthiest fruit you can eat. When we look at the nutritional profile of an apple, it doesn't really seem too special. Most of the calories are carbohydrates from sugar. It isn't super high in fiber. All the vitamins are relatively low, small amount of biotin. Vitamin C is decent. And for minerals, it only has a small amount of potassium and copper. Now, most people are focusing too much on adding positives instead of reducing the negatives in their diet and lifestyle. Why do you need more protein or B vitamins when your liver can't even detox excess iron stores? You know, you have to walk before you can run. And that's where apples shine. Unlike a lot of other fruits that can be pretty high in anti-nutrients like saponins, oxalates, salicylates. So you really want to pay attention to how you feel after eating certain fruits. You know, there's been a lot of fear mongering over these past few years, demonizing carbs, anti-sugar, especially the keto carnivore dieters. People are shying away from natural foods that there is absolutely nothing wrong with, especially apples. The gut bacteria needs carbohydrates to survive. Yet everyone that cuts carbs from their diet is wondering why they don't feel good. It's a key component of the natural human diet. Removing carbohydrates from the diet will shift your gut bacterial profile over to microbes better suited for carnivore and keto diets. Problem is, when you're on those diets, you're removing certain bacteria responsible for producing many different nutrients, as well as neurotransmitters in the body. That's why, you know, when people drink the water kefir I have, when they eat certain meals, they feel good. Keto carnivore is kind of just like a, a neutral personality all day. On top of that, most importantly, the liver cannot detox without carbohydrates. Fats and proteins promote hyperabsorption of nutrients. So as soon as those toxins come out of the liver, whether they're fat soluble, water soluble, the low motility of a keto or carnivore diet, you know, the high fat content just promotes the reabsorption of anything that you might have been able to remove. So the conventional wisdom says that fiber reduces cholesterol. That means when people see high fiber content in a food, they think it's healthy. And you don't want to only look at the fiber content of a fruit to see how good it is for you. Then they correlate that to detoxing, gut health, gut motility. Don't let the low fiber content of certain foods detract you from those properties. The food volume based on water content is very significant. In addition to the carbohydrate, whether starch or sugar content of the food, high food volume will help you push toxins out of the liver through the digestive system, keeping them moving out. Starch will give the toxins something to soak into and feed your gut bacteria so that those microbes can hold on to even more toxins. The liver uses sugars to detox and reduces cell damage by creating fat to store toxins in. And apples really seem to be one of the best foods across the board for this. They're basically a clean slate. You cannot ask for a better food for detoxing your liver and keeping things going. They might not be adding a ton of nutrition, but you're feeding your gut bacteria, removing those toxins from your liver, the two most important things in being healthy 
and feeling good. Not all apples are the same. There are different sugar profiles depending on the type of apple as well as the stage of ripeness. You have a fairly insignificant amount of sorbitol sugar alcohol, a small amount of glucose there in the middle, but the majority of the sugars in apples are fructose and sucrose, sucrose being glucose bound to a fructose molecule. As we've spoken about in the past, uh, specifically my flextrose video, we want as little stress on the liver and enzymes as possible. I go incredibly in depth in that video on that, you know, what carbohydrates stress the body the least. So it would make sense that we want an apple with a higher glucose content and a lower fructose content and uh, the sucrose isn't that great either because you do need enzymes to break it down. Now, whether those ratios are dependent on the type of apple or the ripeness, it's really, really up in the air because the studies don't say anything definite. You know, I saw some that said golden delicious apples have the highest glucose content. Other studies were saying that Fuji apples had a higher glucose content and a lower fructose content. Either way, they're all pretty similar with the exception of the Granny Smith apples, which are much higher in starch and I'm not really too much of a fan of them. But you definitely want to peel the apples to remove any agrochemicals on the skin. And there are certain anti-nutrients and flavonoids that can stress the liver in that skin. You know, imagine if you had to peel a grape or peel a blueberry or peel any of those other fruits. Yeah, they'd probably be less anti-nutrients, but it's just not a practical thing to do. Uh, from the natural perspective of, you know, apples growing on trees, harvesting them year round, I think that type of fruit wouldn't be, you know, eaten by an animal or some type of herbivore first, unlike a lot of those tropical fruits, bats eating certain things. So you have to think of the climate. Could this food be eaten practically and all that type of stuff? I think apples are, are pretty good on that list from the natural perspective. And just personally experimenting my diet, it really is uh, the safest fruit to eat consistently on a daily basis. So hopefully this gives you guys some encouragement to include some high quality peeled organic apples into your diet. There's a lot of variety in the supermarkets now. They have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different apples. You can never really get bored with it and you have no excuse to try anything else for dessert to be honest. And on the side here, guys, the relevant information, you can go to frank stefanocom to see all of those businesses as well as some of my courses or if you like, schedule a consultation with me. Frankiesforrangefoods.com. We have the Flextrose. You guys should definitely check out that video. And Water Kefir, which will also help you digest sugars or any carbohydrate for that matter. OrganSupplements.com. The Masticum. Excellent to take if you're having a hard time digesting sugar or, you know, passing certain foods. And wifishielding.com, I guess even more important than everything else, you want to shield your liver and digestive system from radiation, which uh, can be a real catastrophe and is a catalyst for many people's health issues. So thanks again for joining me, guys. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said, guys, frank-stefano.com. See you tomorrow.